AMD's RDNA 3 lineup is now complete with the tandem release of the new mid-range cards, the RX 7800 XT and the RX 7700 XT. Paired with 16 and 12 GB of VRAM respectively, just how well does Radeon's latest offerings compare to Nvidia's 4000 lineup? And when shopping for partner cards, are any of them a must buy or should you just be looking for whatever's cheapest? Taking a quick look at our test system, we're using an Intel Core i9-13900K paired with 32GB of DDR5-6000 memory, Windows 11 with VBS enabled, and the latest drivers provided by AMD. Starting off with the 1080p results, and we can see that the AMD RX 7800 XT is in pretty good company, being just a little bit faster than the RTX 4070. This does also roughly put it on par with last generation's RX 6900 XT and slightly slower than the NVIDIA RTX 3090. The RTX 4070 Ti though is a decided step up, being 20% faster than the reference 7800 XT. Moving to the 7700 XT and we can see that it's sandwiched in between last generation's RTX 3080 and last generation's RX 6800. While that isn't amazing, it is significantly faster than the RTX 4060 Ti. When looking at ray tracing performance at 1080p, the AMD RX 7800 XT does do a little better against last generation's RX 6900 XT, being now about 2% faster. It doesn't do as well against Nvidia cards, now being even slower than last generation's RTX 3080 and the vanilla RTX 4070 being 16% faster. The RX 7700 XT does do much better against its contemporaries, now being significantly faster than the RX 6800, though it is a little bit slower than the RTX 4060 Ti. Bumping up the resolution to 1440p and we can see the AMD RX 7800 XT is about in line with the RX 6900 XT, very similar to the 1080p results. That does mean it is a little bit faster than the RTX 4070, and still slower than the RTX 4070 Ti, which is about 19% faster. And all the partner cards are pretty huddled together between 3 and 4% faster than the reference model. Dropping down to the RX 7700 XT puts us a little bit slower than the RTX 4070 and still above last generation's RX 6800 and well above the RTX 4060 Ti. While those numbers might not sound all that impressive, the 7700 XT is pushing above 100 FPS on average in all our games tested, so it's still going to provide a really good experience. Bumping up to the RX 7800 XT nets you about 20 more FPS, so probably a better fit if you are looking for high refresh gaming. Bumping up the resolution yet again to 4K doesn't really change the results all that much. The RX 7800 XT is still about even with the RX 6900 XT and still trailing the RTX 3090 and RTX 4070 Ti. The same holds true for the RX 7700 XT, though we are now slightly slower than the last generation's RX 6800. That card does have a little bit extra VRAM so that might have something to do with it, but it is still faster than the RTX 4060 Ti equipped with 16GB as well. That lead over the RTX 4060 Ti becomes more apparent when looking at the 1% lows. With all RX 7700 XT models averaging around 50 FPS and the RTX 4060 Ti only mustering about 42. The RX 7800 XT does deliver a better overall experience being above 60 FPS at all times, though the RTX 4070 Ti still controls the lead with 70.6 FPS. Power consumption is one area where we always expect a newer generation to perform better than the older generation. And while this is true for the 7700 XT and 7800 XT, it's not as true as it normally is. The RX 7700 XT uses between 230 and 240 watts while gaming, which is about the same as the RX 6800. And while it's true that these new cards are faster than the RX 6800, it appears the gen over gen jump in efficiency isn't that big. This is something we also noticed in the RX 7600 review, so it just appears that AMD's latest architecture does not scale down as well. The RX 7800 XT does fare a bit better. 
All the cards we tested used between 250 and 290 watts, which is a little bit less than last generation's RX 6800 XT, while competing more in performance with the RX 6900 XT, which is at 305 watts. You can more easily see this when we look at watts per frame, and for the most part, the 7700 XT is at the bottom here at 5.8 watts per frame, the best option being the Sapphire being 5.5 watts per frame. That's the only option that actually beats out any of the 7800 XT models, with the Azeroth being the most power hungry at 5.6 watts, the best partner cards coming in at 5.3 watts, and the AMD reference model coming in at 5 watts. For those of you looking to play at a lock 60 FPS though, the script does flip pretty much. And now the 7700 XT is more efficient than the 7800 XT, and the partner cards are more efficient than the reference model, more than likely related to the generous power curve used in the reference design. Fan noise is normally a big selling point for partner cards, and these cards are no exception. Surprisingly, the 7800 XT models actually do a bit better than the 7700 XTs, with the power color model coming in at 25 dBA, both Sapphire cards coming in at 25 and 26, the ASUS 7700 XT at 26.7, the ASRock's RX 7800 XT at 28.3, and the ASUS RX 7800 XT Tough at 28.4. The two XFX cards are grouped pretty close together, being at 29 and 31 dBA respectively, but the loud one of the bunch is the AMD RX 7800 XT reference design coming in at almost 36 dBA. And it turns out all that fan noise is required since the AMD RX 7800 XT reference design comes in at 74.3 degrees C at 35 dBA and 255 watts. That's about 13 degrees worse than the Sapphire RX 7700 XT Pulse and about 28 degrees worse than the best performer, the PowerColor RX 7800 XT Hellhound at 46.9 C. Briefly looking at overclocking performance and all the RX 7700 XT cards overclock to roughly the same level, being at about three to 3.1 gigahertz, which results in about 17% more performance for all models. The RX 7800 XT is a little more varied in its performance, ranging between 2.7 and 2.9 GHz, with the partner cards generally being faster and getting about 5% more performance than the reference model. Still, the overall performance increases by roughly the same amount, being about 13-15% to 15 faster than stock. How are these cards in terms of value? Starting off with the RX 7800 XT, and we can see that that at $450 or the MSRP, the Sapphire RX 7700 XT Pulse is the best value out of the 7700 XT cards, followed closely by the ASUS Tough and the XFX Quick 319. These cards are only $20 more and do include better coolers, especially the ASUS model, so for some people they may be the overall better option. All of them are better deals than the RTX 4060 Ti with 16 gigabytes and roughly in line with the RTX 4060 Ti with 8 gigabytes. Though over time, with increasing VRAM demands, that might change. Moving up the charts, we can see that even the most expensive 7800 XT, the Sapphire Nitro Plus, comes in at better value for money than any of the 7700 XT cards. From there, we basically scale with price. The XFX Merc 319 is at $540 and a little bit better value than the Sapphire. The ASUS Tough is at $530 and even better value and the ASRock RX 7800 XT Phantom Gaming is at $530 and basically tied with the ASUS. This leaves the two MSRP cards at $500 at the top, though with its better cooler and faster performance, the PowerColor RX 7800 XT Hellhound pulls away from the reference model with 3% more value. This does make the PowerColor card the one to get out of pretty much everything we cover here today, and while its value may not be amazing, it is the best value card in this performance bracket. The RX 7700 XT though is lacking in value though, but if you can get one for $400 to $420, you are in a pretty good spot. 